Okay, welcome to uh, the SFPE Hong Kong Student uh, Chapter webinar. So uh, I'm Dr. Xing Yu Huang, Assistant Professor at the BSE Department of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Today we have a, a great pleasure to invite one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Wu Xichang uh, from our department to give a talk about using the artificial intelligence for the tunnel fire uh, research. So uh, Dr. Wu joined PolyU uh, two years ago. Uh, currently, he's a research assistant professor at the Building Service Engineering. Oh, and uh, his major research area uh, is uh, structure uh, behavior in the fire environment, as well as uh, using the artificial intelligence and big data uh, for the fire, smart firefighting project. So today he will briefly review the latest development of our uh, smart firefighting project. So now I'll just uh, give my microphone to Dr. Wu. Thanks Dr. Huang for the warm introduction. Okay, I share my screen. So, uh, hi everyone, good, morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. This is Wu Xichang. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to see our recent group pro progress uh, of Hong Kong PolyU Fire Research Group on the topic of smart city firefighting. And today, uh, in the, we, I will in, uh, mainly introduce the progress about tunnel fire using AI. And uh, we have done this topic for the last uh, two years. The presentation will include the following parts. First, I will introduce the fire hazards in tunnel, uh, which is our research significance. And then I will give you a brief introduction about AI methods. And after that, come to the main part of the presentation, uh, which is the uh, applying AI uh, for the tunnel fire. Uh, mainly it can be divided into two types of tasks. The first is identification of fire information, such as uh, fire location, fire size, and the ventilation in, in tunnel. And the other is forecasting. We want to know how the fire will develop in the next few minutes. And last come to the conclusion and contributions of this research to the community of fire safety engineering. So first, let's see the fire hazards in tunnels. Fire accident happens uh, every year. The hot gases will not only threaten the people in the tunnel, but also uh, cause damage to the tunnel structure. First, let's see uh, accident uh, of tunnel fire. This is by accident happened in Korea. A car crashed near the wall of the tunnel, and then it caught fire. Uh, hot gases are produced, and the visibility in the tunnel is lower, and people are trying to evacuate from the tunnel. However, this accident killed one person, and another 15 persons are injured. So we can see that the fire accident in tunnel is very severe. So many researchers have done uh, studies on this topic. They have used, uh, they have done uh, fire tests and simulations. When they do the test, they, they may use the small, the large scale or real scale uh, tunnel as soon on the top two figures. And they may also use a small scale tunnel as soon on lower two figures. And what did they study? They studied the topic on the fire safety uh, in tunnel, mainly it is temperature distribution induced by the fire and smoke visibility in the tunnel and critical velocity and the effect of power holding on the ventilation in the tunnel. And these are the main topics 
related to the fire safety in tunnels. However, when a fire happens in a tunnel, it develops very fast. And in a few minutes, the gas temperature in the tunnel is very high. And we, we may do the test or simulations, but uh, we may need more times. So uh, it is only too late to do the test or simulations when the fire happens. So do we have any uh, solutions to help the firefighters to fight with the fire? Uh, the, such as we want to know the fire location in the tunnel and how severe the fire is and how to extinguish the fire faster and how to guide the person in the tunnel to evacuate from the tunnel. And to all these questions, the answer is yes, we can use AI to help the firefighters to extinguish or guide people in the tunnel. So next, let's uh, have a brief uh, instruction about the AI methods. AI has experienced a long history in development, uh, experienced mainly two stages. Uh, there are two so-called AI winter uh, in the history, which means people didn't pay much attention on the AI methods, but now, these days, we come to the new stage, uh, which we, due to the development of new machine learning methods, and especially the new deep learning methods, and also due to the development of the computing capacity, uh, all these methods has been used in many areas, including the fire safety engineering. And uh, you may have uh, heard several technical words about AI, such as artificial intelligence, which is AI, and machine learning methods, and deep learning methods. And what are the differences between these technical words? The artificial intelligence, it is the largest concept. The original concept of AI, it not only includes the methods, but also the devices, machine, and the difference between machine learning methods and AI method is the data flow. Machine learning needs data flow to train the AI model. And the AI method don't need the data flow. They can just design uh, directly. Uh, what is the difference between uh, machine learning methods and deep learning method? It is uh, the human intervention. Using deep learning methods, we don't need to design uh, the feature. Uh, by using machine learning methods, we need to de define the features, such as we want to detect the cat in the figure. Using deep learning methods, we don't need to def define any features. We just use these figures to train the AI model. By using machine learning methods, we need to define the features such as the color of the cat, and shape of the cat, and any potential motion of the cat. So it is more difficult to use the machine learning method, but deep learning method, it is easier to use, and it is more powerful. So we are using uh, deep learning methods for the uh, smart city by fighting. And uh, we want to use these methods on different infrastructures, such as office building, hospital building, tunnel, primary school, MTR station, all these kind of infrastructures. We want to know uh, how to use the ER methods for the firefighting. And to begin with, we, we use the simpler structure, which is uh, tunnel structure. So next, let's see how we apply the deep learning methods for the tunnel fire fighting. Imagine that uh, here's a tunnel, uh, there's a fire in the tunnel. Uh, we have several sensors measuring the temperature near the seating of the tunnel. And uh, using this data, we want to know 
uh, how severe the fire is and where is the fire and ventilation condition in the tunnel, whether the fan in the tunnel still works. And using the sensor data, we want to know all this information. Uh, this is uh, our problem. And uh, we want to use AI to solve this problem. And uh, this is our method. We use CFD simulation and AI, can, AI algorithms. And the method is that we first simulate uh, different cases of fire scenario using CFD software. And then we get the results. Uh, using the results, such as the sensor data and the fire, fire scenario and images, we can use the, all this data to train the AI model. And then after training, the AI model can be applied to solve this problem uh, using the sensor data, sensor data to uh, detect the fire to know the fire location and the fire size. And this part of work has been published on fire technology. Uh, this is our simulation. I won't go into too many details about simulation. Above all, the simulation is to guarantee that the simulation is correct. There's no problem about simulation. And after simulation, we get the simulating results. Uh, this is an example of the result. The column means the sensor uh, location, and the row of table means the, at different time. Uh, for different scenarios, we get different table. Uh, this is our database to train the AI model. We have different uh, table of data. Different table means different fire scenario. And then we cut the table into different samples. Uh, with each sample, we give the answer, which is the label. The answer is the right answer of the uh, fire information, such as fire location, fire size, and the ventilation. This is the label. Uh, this is the answer. And then we can get different samples. These samples can be used to train the AI model. Uh, all these samples can be divided into three groups. The first group is the training data set. Uh, second is validation data set. And third is test data set. The training data set is used to train the AI model. Uh, this process is like teaching a course. And when we teach a course, we give the students the textbooks. Uh, students can learn the subject uh, by looking at the textbooks. And the learning process is like here, the training data set, to so use the data set to train the AI model. And generally after learning the course for a period of time, we give the students in-class quizzes. And the quiz is like the validation data set here. And at the end of the semester, we generally have an exam. And the exam is to check whether the student has learned the subject very well. And the exam here is like the test data set. So we uh, ask the students to learn the course by textbooks and then give some quizzes. And finally, the exam to check uh, how well the students has learned. And this is the AI model we used. We use deep learning methods. And the input is what do we have? Uh, when a fire happens in tunnel, we have the sensor data. Sensor data measured by the temperature sensor. And we have this data uh, as input to the AI model. And the output is the answer we want to know, which is the fire information, such as the fire size, how severe the fire is, uh, fire location, uh, where the fire is, and the ventilation condition, whether the flying tunnel still works. So we want to use the sensor data to know the fire information. And between them, we have the AI model. And let's see, uh, the AI model performance. 
And after when it is training, we can see that uh, the accuracy of the AI model is uh, very high. And finally, it is around 100%, which means uh, the AI model can uh, give the prediction of fire information with a very high accuracy. So the AI model can predict the fire information, such as fire size, fire location, very accurate with the sensor data. And we also tested uh, whether the AI model can perform well in real world. So we used the uh, fire test to validate the AI model. And this is our uh, this is a small scale tunnel in our lab. This is the tunnel and uh, this is data logger. And above the tunnel, there are many sensors, thermal couples to measure the temperature during the test. Uh, we use data logger to collect the data and then transfer it to the computer used to, to use the AI. And AI can give the prediction of the fire information. And Let's, let's see our test. Uh, this is our lab in PolyU. Uh, first, we put the fuel into a pan and open the tunnel. Uh, put the fuel into the tunnel. And next, we ignite the fire. So we can use the thermal couple to measure the temperature and then transfer to the data logger and then to computer to use the AI. And the front wall of the tunnel was said to be transparent so that we can visualize, we can look at the fire. In practice, actually the tunnel wall is not transparent. And uh, here is the prediction. Uh, this is the tunnel. Uh, this is the temperature curve measured by thermal couples. Uh, this is the this figure shows the prediction by the AI model. As we can see, when the fire on the left, the AI model can also know that it is on the left. And then we move the fire to the middle. And we can also see that AI prediction also move to the right. And then we further move the, the fire source to the right of the tunnel. And we can see that the temperature measured by data logger also increases on the right. And also the AI prediction also moves to the right. Although there's a delay in the prediction by the AI, it is only several seconds and so it is uh, it can be ignored in practical using only several seconds still very useful for the firefighters and that is the work we done to uh, identify the fire source in the tunnel and after that we further carry studies on the firefighting on the forecasting of the fire so we want to, uh, when the fire happens, we also want to use the sensor data to know uh, how the fire will develop in next few minutes. So it is not the detection, it is forecast, forecast the development in the future so that we can know uh, where we are safe and where we will we we'll be unsafe in the tunnel in next few minutes, uh, which will facilitated the guidance to the people in the tunnel to evacuate from the tunnel. And also we use AI model, uh, which is a deep learning algorithm. And the input still, the temperature measured by sensor data. And the output is to show uh, the development of the temperature distribution in the next few minutes. So we want to know how it will develop uh, in the tunnel. 
Uh, this work is also published uh, on building simulation. And this is the predicting accuracy. As we can see, uh, with the training process, the accuracy in predicting the distribution of temperature increases and finally it uh, reached uh, around 100 percent percentage. So the accuracy, so the predicting of the temperature distribution is also very accurate. And uh, this is the result. And uh, first, this is the current situation, the temperature distribution at present. And uh, we have the uh, sensor data measured by the thermal couples. And this is the simulating result, which can be regarded as the actual uh, scenario after one minute. Uh, this is the prediction by the AI, which is also one minute afterwards. And we can compare these two pages. Uh, this is actual uh, distribution, and uh, this is AI prediction on the temperature distribution. Uh, we can see that they are very similar. And the difference is only 2.5 centigrade. So this, the difference is very small and can be used for uh, five factors. Uh, this is the comparison of the simulation and AI prediction of the temperature distribution. As we can see, with time uh, develop, the temperature distribution also, also changed. Uh, this is the simulation result. It can be regarded as the actual distribution of temperature. And uh, this is the, uh, the lower one is the AI prediction of temperature distribution. So we can see that they are much similar, which means AI can give a very good prediction of the temperature distribution. And uh, we can see that here uh, on the left, the temperature is lower and AI can also uh, predict this. And on the right, the temperature is very high. And AI can also give a good prediction. So we can note that uh, on the right, the temperature is very high. On the left, it is safer. It is, the temperature is lower. And uh, this is the comparison uh, for different fire size. As we can see, uh, when the fire size is very small, the prediction uh, is very accurate. It is very similar to the actual or the simulated scenario. Uh, when the fire size is very large, the prediction by the AI is also very accurate. And it is much similar to the simulation result. And after seeing that the AI model is really powerful, it gives very good prediction and identification. And you may want to know uh, how did we really done this work? How did we uh, write this code? about AI model. Uh, here is the flow we use for the AI model. Uh, if you have a computer without AI, now you can now install these softwares or libraries. First, you can install the uh, TensorFlow and Keras, these two software into a computer. Uh, and then you can also in install the software Anaconda and the Spider. And using Spider, you can write your codes. Uh, you can also test to debug your codes. And the main part is the AI code, how to write the AI code. Um, for, the, for the computer science guys, they may develop the AI codes from the first line. But for us, we only use or apply the available AI model to our field. We only use the AI to know the fire location, fire size. We don't really develop new AI methods. So we, for me, uh, when I was learning, I just uh, I installed these softwares and uh, just Google the AI method I want to use. 
such as you want to use the decision tree or decision forest or the generic um, methods, you can just Google it. Google it with, and then you can find the example of this kind of methods. And you can copy this code and then modify the code on your own computer. And this is just the very easy. You don't really need to write this code from the first line. And this is the code. Uh, you can see that it can be divided into three parts. It is not so long. And first you can import the libraries, which will facilitate the codes. You don't really need to write uh, each section. And you can just import these libraries. And then you can just uh, import data, the data set to train the AI model. And after that, you write AI code. And this part is not, you can, you can just copy from the example uh, in Google and then modify the AI model. You don't really need to, need to write from the first line. And after getting this code, you can then train your AI model and for any goal, such as file, you want to know file location, file size, you can just uh, change the output of the AI model. And this is the uh, our research works on the tunnel fire combining with AI. And in this work, we uh, successfully identified the fire scenario with very high accuracy. We also forecast the fire scenario with a very high accuracy. And all these data set and AI model are publicly available. You can just uh, search our paper published and you will find the uh, site for the database and the program. You can then try these methods. And this part of works are uh, done under this and and a very large uh, research project, which we which was leading by the fire group in PolyU. Uh, we used it is the smart fire mapping. Uh, we use the high end technologies such as AI, 5G. Uh, beam, and we all use these softwares and, and high technologies to uh, work on this project. And if you have interest in this topic or the uh, project, you can send your CV to uh, Dao Huang. You can also visit our website. And also, I'm working on the uh, topic combining AI and structural response, and I will. Uh, use AI to forecast the response of the structure, the whole structure and structure, structure component. It is used for the safety design of the structure. And also uh, for the existing structure, it is used to predict the structure collapse. And if you have any uh, questions or if you want to do such topic, you can contact me. And that's all my presentation. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wu, for your very detailed uh, presentation and uh, a great review of our recent work. And uh, uh, if any of the audience have questions, you can type in the chat room. I can collect. Uh, you can also ask for a mute. I can. Okay, there is a question in chat room, uh, it says, I wonder what sensor setup in the FDS model and is there any thermocouple in the high direction for your tunnel fire simulation, I guess. Okay. For the simulation, uh, it is actually we defined many sensors in tunnel, but it, we didn't use all the sensors we tried um, with different distances between the sensor. Uh, first, we tried uh, with distance be with a distance of one meter, and the prediction accuracy is very high. And then we try uh, different distances of sensor. It is uh, uh, five meter or ten meter, and this is a process of sensitivity analysis. 
And finally, we found that uh, if the distance is 10 meter or 20 meter, the predicting accuracy is still very high. It is more than, it is higher than uh, 94 percent. So um, the distance between sensor is 10 or 20 meter, and it is uh, uh, 0.5 meter from the top ceiling of tunnel. So there is no uh, sensor at different height, right? Only, only yeah, yeah, height. yes. It is uh, near the ceiling. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense because uh, the hot gas goes up. Uh, you yeah. Don't yeah. Stay near the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. The second question here is uh, will the spalling of the concrete affect the sensor inside the tunnel? Uh, we didn't consider this influence. Actually, we just consider the development of fire, the influence of the fire on the distribution of temperature and the smoke. Didn't consider the damage to the structure of the tunnel. I okay. guess maybe the maybe spalling can be induced by the by the fire. I, I guess all these sensors will fail before. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, yes, maybe, yes, yes. Yeah, it can be damaged by the uh, hot gases. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, uh, may I have asked a question, uh, Dr. Wu? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, uh, first of all, thanks for your very nice presentation. Uh, here I've got another question and uh, hope for your answer. The question is regarding your uh, experiment in the page 21. Can you go there? Yes. Yeah, I noticed there's uh, a purple previous one, uh, 20. Okay. Okay, go 20. Yeah, I noticed that you, for your experiment, you are using a relatively small scale tunnel for the experiment. But uh, uh, in my domain, I know there is some difference uh, between the large scale experiment and the real, which uh, also called the large scale, the real uh, fire scenario. Is there any difference between the small scale experiment with a large real tunnel? What's the difference between the, I mean, uh, I, let me make myself clear. I wonder whether the, your small scale experiment can stand for the real fire in the real tunnel. Is there more okay. difference between these two? Okay, uh, for our, thanks for the question. It's very nice. Actually, we uh, didn't use a large scale or real scale tunnel. We used the small scale and scale is 50. So the tunnel is very small. And uh, it is uh, only in our lab. And we use this uh, tunnel only for validate the AI methods in our, uh, we build up. And the difference is that the material, it is here, it is steel. And uh, in practice, it is maybe concrete. And, uh, but I think the mainly difference maybe uh, is temperature distribution by the fire. And here we uh, also use a steel uh, calculation uh, for the fire source. Uh, we, the fire source we set, it is, uh, uh, you can stand for the uh, car or the, or the tank truck uh, fire in the real. So um, in the aspect of, of uh, the burner, it can stand for the uh, real scale tunnel fire. And since the temperature is mainly influenced by the burner, so uh, I think the temperature distribution in the tunnel uh, for a small scale tunnel, it can stand for the real scale tunnel. And here we only consider for the temperature distribution. So I think uh, this smoke scale uh, tunnel factors can stand for the real scale tunnel. Uh, yes, so you, for your sim simulation, you are still using a small scale simulation as well to validate the small scale experiment. Is that what you- Yeah, 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 yes. Okay. yes, that, yes that makes yes. sense, yes. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. yeah, okay, thank you. Thanks for your, yeah. 
me ask you about uh, your simulation work, other simulation work. You simulate the real scale, right? Uh, yes, but when we validate the AI model, actually we train the AI model with the simulation on the small scale tunnel. And apart from that, we also simulated the real scale tunnel. In the paper, we simulated the real scale. It is 160 meter in length and six meter in height and six meter in width. It is a real scale tunnel constructed in uh, Sichuan Fire Research Institute in China. And uh, we simulated that tunnel and to see whether AI can do the prediction for the real tunnel. But for the validation of the AI model, uh, we simulated the small scale tunnel here. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Another question I, I saw in the in the chat room is uh, someone asked where the, the tunnel geometry, like a height, width, length, affect the tunnel fire scenario, and how do you generalize your AI model into the real tunnel? Okay. Uh, I. The geometry of the tunnel would influence uh, the fire scenario, of course. And we regard this issue as the a skill, a skill between the real scale tunnel and small scale tunnel. And we just validate the AI model uh, using the small scale tunnel. And the AI model is trained with the simulation on the small scale tunnel. And it was Validated, validated with the small scale. And from this uh, point, if we use the large scale uh, simulation of the uh, tunnel fire, maybe it can be used. It can also be used for the large scale tunnel in practice. But we haven't uh, tested the AI model using large scale tunnel fire, fire test. And we, uh, our next plan is to uh, go to uh, Sichuan Fire Research Institute to validate the AI model using the real scale tunnel. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, another question is how do, uh, someone ask if the small scale tunnel is made of concrete, will, will there be change in the result? Uh, Different material, yeah, it may be may change the result. Uh, here we use the steel. Uh, in practice, it is concrete, but it is the temperature in the we measure is the gas temperature, and gas temperature uh, it is only for several minutes. So the heat transfer between the air and the concrete, and heat transfer between the air and steel, the difference would be very small. So we regard the influence of the uh, material maybe not so maybe not so significant. Yeah, in fact, yeah. You can, you do the simulation, you, you can set the wall is. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. Yes. Okay, uh, I think there's oh, one more question. How how do you quantify the accuracy of okay. AI? For the AI model accuracy, it is uh, R square determinant of coefficient. Uh, it is uh, calculated, calculated uh, not only one point. It is uh, the it is all the points. We calculate the R square for all the points, all the pixel in the image, not only the uh, pixel near the fire source. We consider the overall overall image of the temperature distribution. And uh, we use these pixels to calculate the R square. Yeah, it is the R square to uh, quantify the accuracy. It is uh, it is commonly used for the AI model to quantify the accuracy of AI model because it is uh, uh, independent with the uh, uh, with the quantity you are using, whether you are using the temperature or smoke, uh, it, will, it will not influence the uh, calculation of the R square. It is uh, 
very commonly used. Okay, so uh, another question is uh, someone asked you, uh, have you ever extracted uh, some other tunnel fire research literature data to train the model for the tunnel fire prediction? Uh, for this, for the studies I introduced today, uh, I didn't in extract the data from other publications. Uh, we only, because the simulation here, it is not so difficult. And the publication, the data in, pub, in other publications may not have such uh, simulations. Uh, they may have different size, a different uh, uh, size of a tunnel, different size of the fire. So the scenario is different. Uh, we conduct all these simulations by ourselves. But uh, in another publication we uh, published uh, previously, we extracted the data uh, different uh, uh, by different experts or researchers about the test, different tunnel fire test. We extract all this information data and uh, to form a large database. And we use the AI, we use the database to train the AI model and to predict the critical velocity in the tunnel. And that is another paper we published. If you are interested, you can just Google uh, our name and perspective of the uh, AI uh, model in tunnel fire, such keywords. Yes, usually the data in the literature is very limited. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, few parameters, some empirical formula, and also it's steady state. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Right, uh, yes, so the prediction can only be as good as the database. So if the data is yeah. quite, uh, very little thing can be done. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. And our database can also uh, be used uh, in, uh, in future. Uh, if you have, you, if you build up an AI model and uh, you can also use this database. This database can be used for other uh, training of the AI model. Yeah. If, if the, I know there are many people doing the tunnel fire experiment, but they don't present. Yeah. yeah. So very difficult to use. These yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And our database and also the AI codes are all publicly available to everyone. So you can download all this database and AI code uh, and then try on your own computer. Yeah. And, uh, and the software, just like this, you can install all the software and libraries and then try our methods. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Xuxiang. So I think that's all for today's presentation. And for the audience- uh, Excuse me, uh, may I have one more question? Oh, yes, please. Yes. Uh, it's just the, about the last, your last the slides. So I'm quite interested in the the one you mentioned, how can you use the AI to the compartment fire? Yeah, this one. Uh, this one. That's more or less related to what I'm doing. So I'm a bit uh, interested in this one. Do you have any detailed explanation of uh, how can you apply to the AI to the compartment fire? Is there any uh, work you have finished just um, probably related to the thermal mechanical behavior of the compartment, something like this? Okay. It's an open question, just uh, yeah, I'm okay. interested in you, this project. Okay, okay. Uh, for the component fire, I'm, my plan is for the structural response in fire combining with AI. Uh, so I want to study uh, from the uh, single component, such as column and steel, steel column and the steel beam, and then study the uh, component fire. It is uh, also, very it is standard uh, structure. I want to know uh, when the slab of the compartment will fill and how it will fill, and also how the column of the compartment will fill and when it will fill, using AI to uh, predict all this information. And for the fire size, uh, such as the smoke and uh, the Temperature, I think uh, Dr. Huang has done many tests and 
uh, is doing such study using AI for the common fire. Oh uh, yeah, uh, we, if you are interested, we can organize another webinar to talk about the AI application in the common fire, maybe in a few months. Yeah, yeah, same. Okay, okay, sounds good. That's all for today's presentation. And for all the audience, if you attend this webinar for more than 30 minutes, we will send you a CPD certificate. Uh, if uh, it's less than 30 minutes, so we cannot send the certificate. Okay, and uh, uh, all the videos uh, recording will be posted online in the YouTube channel. So we will also share the link to you guys. Uh, thank you for coming and please join our future events. Thank you. Okay, okay. see you, bye-bye.